Okay, great. I was hoping to use that poll as a kind of a jumping off point for our discussion. And so I'm going to share um, some results from a previous similar poll. And what our results showed was that 60 something percent of agile transformations had what they considered issues with change management. And they found that change management was actually an impediment. But the 20 something percent who had a positive experience found that it was terrific and they couldn't have done it without change management. So that's a big, big difference between the good, the bad, and the ugly. And a large portion of them said that they had no change management. So it's all over the place. And just when you think you've seen it all, you find out something new. So my experiences have been encompassing of all of this. Some of the most successful transformation things that I've undertaken have actually had terrific change management. Terrific change management, where the change manager was actually embedded on our team, somebody that we hired, somebody that was literally at our service. And other situations, this was change management that was established in the organization. And in those situations, I've had some good experiences and some terrible ones and some situations where I actually had to work around them, create my own change management strategy and implementation. And since I come from a change management background, I was able to leverage that and it proved quite successful but I put it in the category of don't try this at home because you, you can use up a lot of political capital that can hurt you in the long haul. And finally, I've had situations where there was no change matter. It was the wild west. And in situations like that, I was able to leverage change management ideas through the agile lens with an agile perspective and to use them without the organization getting in the way. But all along, I keep thinking there has to be a better way. And I would love to see these results at the end because I'm curious if others see what I see and have had similar experiences. So we'll come to that later on, hopefully. Why is this important? You know, Agile's been around 20 years. But approaches to change management have been around for 80 years. And that's a big difference. <laughs> New research is making a difference in all of these practices. And if we look back to the 1940s, we see Lewin's change model. Unfreeze, change, and refreeze. This is a model that's old. But gosh, it still works. <laughs> and don't we find when we have to break the permafrost at organizations, we have to break that frozen level. So it's from the 1940s, but we still talk about it today. We talk about the frozen middle, right? And so that change methodology is really still viable. Then in 1969, um, a researcher named Kubler-Ross came up with the five stages of grief. And for a long time, a really long time, this was seen as something with great relevance to Agile and to change and transformation. That everybody goes through these five stages and change management was predicated on getting them through these defined five stages. For a long time, that held sway. But in the early 2000s, it was debunked because the research didn't hold up. So still sometimes today you hear change managers talking about it and it's like, 
suit, that, that's gone, right? You got to take that out of your vernacular. They try to use it in other ways, but it's a debunked research that needs to be reassessed. 1994-95, we see the emergence of John Cotter, his famous seven steps. We see methodologies such as ProSci, which is still the most established change methodology, um, emerge. And we often, in many Agile transformations, talk a lot about those seven steps. So they're very viable for us even today. Then things around the millennium really heat up, right? Agile Manifesto 2001. Carol Dweck, The Growth Mindset 2004. 2008, five stage model debunked, but emergence of the neuroscience of change. David Rock and the SCARF model. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And finally, 2010, 2011, John Cotter revisiting change with the idea of change leadership. Ackerman and Ackerman Anderson focusing on the concept of conscious change leadership. And these align very, very well with agile thinking. We'll touch a little on that later. So the point of this timeline is to show we've had plenty of time to align these practices on how to bring more value to our companies. And yet we haven't done it in many, many cases. So it's really, really time that we have to broaden our perspective, align these two practices to better bring value to our people, our teams, our leaders, and our organizations. 